four, five, six fruit. Here's three fruit down here, six. Here's six fruit down here. Mm -hmm. And what we need is twelve fruit. And what we can do, Dennis, have you walked through the back and forth looking to see if there's an individual plant that just has it's a much better plant. It has more fruit, bigger flowers. Have you done anything like that yet? Not yet. Not yet. Some are right. Yeah, here's some yellow ones here. See, this, this plant is giving us flowers on every shoot, every every branch, and it's ha and it has multiple flowers on every branch, one here, one there. So this is good. It's giving us a lot of flowers, but not many fruit for each cluster of flowers. More flowers coming here, but this is this is giving a lot of flowers. Well, here's a nice cluster here. Again, there's only five fruit here. I'd like to see twelve. For the first harvest? Well, maybe not. You know, for the, I don't know. I don't have enough experience yet. Maybe the first mm -hmm. harvest is going to yeah. be like this. Mm -hmm. But I saw a plant in Mexico. I saw a plant that's from Mexico mm -hmm. that had 23 fruit on one flower. Yeah, 23. How old were those? Just like plants? this. Same age? Same age. Five, six months. Yeah. It was giving a lot of fruit right away. And we have another cultivar. Oh, where? It keeps reappearing. Uh-huh. See that? Has it Yes, I saw one back here, too. This is, are you still videoing? Yep. This is a different cultivar. It has much, much bigger leaves than the other plants around. There's just a few of these in here that we can see. But it's different genetics for some reason. And so we'll have to look and see how much fruit these give as well. Very different plant. They actually develop much slower uh -huh. than the rest, and then you realize that they actually come in up late in the yield. In the yeah, yeah, they're behind. The in the yield. Yeah, these are good observations. So they're not yielding as early. As early as the, the, the rest. Yeah. Okay. Starting to get some branching down low on the plants. We haven't done any pruning in here. Not yet. But here's a here's a plant that was had its its leader, but now it's giving us naturally without any pruning, it's giving us branches that will make a different shape of tree all by itself without pruning. Here's fruit here. Again, six or eight, seven fruit. Yeah, let's get out of the light. There's anything else you've seen in here, Dennis? That, that's noticeable. That's uh, remarkable. You also observe some symptoms of uh, bacteria in in the fruit or in the tree or what? In the wood or in the leaf? Yeah. I want to see that. Now these leaves, why are these leaves? Is that a mildew or a... The grove is basically very healthy, but there's a few leaves. See, this, this branch here needs a little nitrogen, it's too yellow. 
starting to need a little more fertilizer. This branch. But basically, the color is good. Now, if we go over here, some trees are really much bigger. Why is that? Organically fertilized as well. So it had cow manure. No, no manure. No manure. So ah. no manure. was it plowed? It was plowed. So these plants behind you, Joe, the ones you're looking at here. Also, we're in a different spot of the soil here. This is a the soil's a darker color and wetter, and it has more humus in it, more yeah. clay. Yeah. So this soil here is going to be more fertile than the soil up just 50 feet away. And that may explain why these plants are so much bigger. Well, here's, here's what it is. They burned. You burned, yeah. They burned. There's a burn pile here. And so this black is the carbon from the burn. And whenever you do that, the all the nutrients in the wood that is burned goes in the soil like a fertilizer. We saw the same thing in Mexico. Wherever they were burning weeds or burning the brush, they had much bigger plants right where the carbon was. So now, what, what I'm trying to look at now is how to maximize, uh, to minimize vegetative growth yeah. in favor of uh, yield. Well, I would say these plants are in balance. You don't have excess vegetative growth. Oh. They're fruiting very well. They're fruiting very well. So here's a typical thing we're seeing. Here are brand new flowers that haven't opened yet. And right here are little, little fruit that have already set. Yeah. And lower down, there's fruit that's set much earlier. So these trees are, here's, here's fruit here, here's young fruit right here, and here's new flowers right here, all within, all within about uh, 24 inches of growth. So these plants are not overly vegetative. They're very good. They're fruiting very nicely. The only thing I'm concerned about is I'd like to see more fruit on each cluster as a variety selection. Now at the research farm, Jojo, I saw trees that had six, had twelve fruit in one cluster. So maybe these will do it when they're older. Uh -huh. Except to wait. Because you get the best yield from the third year. Strong. The third year. We, yeah, the yeah. third year they might throw more fruit in each. So the genetics may be here. We just don't see them yet. Maybe. Because uh -huh. it was the same when we first planted. It was just like that. Oh, it's six fruit, five yeah. fruit, and then it went to twelve Four, fruit yeah. later. Oh, okay. Well, then very good. Then I'm happy. Okay. Uh -huh. And I think we'll have more branching if we do selective pruning, taking off the epical. Yeah, pinching. Called yeah. pinching. Pinching. Yeah. What you want to do there, and this is something we haven't decided what to do yet, yeah. is what's called training. training. There's training and there's pruning. Training is: will the tree be tall and narrow, or will it have many branches? Will we make it into a hedge? That's training. That's how you shape the tree. Then pruning is what you cut to do the training. And I don't know whether we should just let these be sort of a normal tree, whether we should make them be like a hedge, whether we should cut them low and have many branches come out, or, or just how to train them yet. That's something that is still being researched and we don't know yet what to do for the highest yield yet. So these are just grown by themselves. They're branching as they do naturally. They haven't been pruned at all, haven't been trained at all. But when they lose their leaves in the dry season and they're dormant, you have an opportunity then to to cut branches down low and get new shoots and do the training. But these are very healthy plants. They like it here and they're flowering and fruiting very prolifically. Here's a branch that's starting to have some flower clusters here and doesn't have any prior to that. Just down here when it originally branched down here it has some flowers but it grew this much with no fruit. That's sort of the exception most of these branches have, whoops, whip that one off. Mm -hmm. Most of these branches have very good flower clusters and fruit down lower down where they've been fruiting. So I'm seeing most of the branches are quite fruitful. That broke off very easily. I'm surprised it broke that easily. It was a branch, yeah. so it just popped off at its junction. There's the the latex dripping, get the get the latex dripping out, you can see the the sap dripping off that. That's the the latex.
latex. Uh, what we did was uh, we realized that the cost of the shortage of the yeah. Yeah. we decided to do is uh, two plants per stand. Let it develop as two plants per stand. Okay. So that come next season we sacrifice one okay. plant per stand and then try some vegetative cutting. So we have two seeds in each place? Not each, but like for most of them. Most of them. So, yeah, so that we could, we could do some selective okay. and then try, and try soft cuttings as well. Try to try to do vegetative. And maybe just leave in two, two seeds. Okay. They, they seem to be doing really well. Yeah. So then what we're looking at, all this growth then is from two trees, not just one in most cases, huh? Yeah. Here's, uh, yeah, here's two here. So, okay, that's... Yeah, I thought it was all one tree. But still, the growth, the, this is excellent growth. This this one is sort of shadowing out that one a little bit. We'll see. I like the color. I like the color, beautiful, nice dark green, and the leaves are thick and, and kind of like leather. Beautiful leaves. So they're getting the nutrition that they need. These leaves are beautiful like vinyl. They're not thin at all. They're nice thick leaves. Very nice color. I don't see any insect pests. I don't see any serious disease of any kind. Leaves are very clean. Plants are growing very beautifully, fruiting very well. So I, I think this is excellent. I think it's a case of having good variety and good soil in a good climate where the trophy is just really happy. It's growing beautifully.